Oh uh, yeah. Too many deals. Not Dope Dealer Podcast. Episode 95. The world's most dangerous podcast. Episode 95. Toby Hicks here. Uh at Toby Hicks, T-O-B-E-H-I-X-X. Uh, shout out to the brother for making that dope track for us. Uh, I'm high and I uh, don't have his name right in front of me out of Philly, though. Yeah, I do know that. So I'm here uh, starting off by myself today. My co-host, uh, Jamal, is uh, stuck in L.A. traffic, so he's running a little bit behind schedule. Uh, so he'll be here in a few, so I'm going to get it started without him. What's up, Doc? What's happening, homie? Uh, uh, shout out to the troops. Uh Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, National Guard, uh, the Bloods, the Crips, and the Essays. Shout out to y'all. We appreciate everything you do. Uh, uh, rest in peace to the rapper uh, Juice World. I'm just uh, at a loss for words. Uh, yeah, 21-year-old rapper uh, passed away recently. Um uh, yeah, these young rappers, I mean, not just young rappers, but young people uh, in the drug situation is is out of control. Uh, it's crazy because I remember back in the days, old people would, you know, talk about people smoking weed and shit and just like, you know, that weed, it's going to kill you and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it leads to other things and, and shit, you know, and nobody seems to be talking about these pills and shit. So, I mean and the stuff that the youngsters are taking now. I don't even, I'm not even familiar with all this shit that they do now. So uh, shout out to the rapper uh, Juice World, his family, uh, tough situation. Uh, especially during this time of year. I mean, it's tough at any time, but the holidays uh, make it a lot tougher. What's up, Tar? What's up, Corliss? What's up, homie? How you doing, man? Uh, Big shout out to my Lakers, to my Lakers, starting off with the 21 and 3 record. Uh, everything is great in Lakerland after everything being fucked up for six years. Uh, we actually got something to cheer for now. It's a beautiful thing uh, watching the fellas ball. Shout out to the Lakers, LeBron, AD. AD had 50 the other day. I see you ain't saying shit about that, Paul. Yeah, AD had 50 the other day. Made it look easy. Um, what else is going on? Shit. <clears throat> Raiders. Uh, down to the last few games uh, in Oakland. We moving to Las Vegas. Uh, whew, shit's been tough recently. Uh, everybody, it's, it's, I want to talk about it. It's the holiday time. And, you know, it's, it's a festive time. Uh, you know, people, lots of parties. You know, people work parties family parties uh but during this time a lot of people are, are really you know having a tough time uh you know dealing with depression during the holidays so let's make sure that we pay attention to our friends family members co-workers people whoever you might be around that you know because uh, it could be a very very tough time you know for them during this time so yeah keep that in mind because a lot of people uh you know, commit suicide during this time. So make sure you, you know, if you got somebody, if you think anything's wrong with them, make sure you go check on them, you talk to them, uh, you tell your friends and family if they, you know, they need something to talk, somebody to talk to, just be there for them. Cause uh, yeah, it could be very, very tough during this time. I, um, oh, I wanna give a shout out to uh, Danny Minch, my homie up Fresno, I was there this weekend. I had a great time in Fresno. Shout out to Danny and his uh, beautiful girlfriend, Jen, for looking out for me. I appreciate y'all. Shout out to the homie Feather for coming to check me out. Yeah, that Fresno, that was a good time. Uh, oh, what else? Jamal caught me off guard with this late shit. You know, I'm normally, you know, I normally come in, since I'm the one who get high, I normally can just fall into the shit. But, uh... You know, sometimes you gotta, uh, gotta, gotta get started on your own, and that's the situation I'm in today. Um, big ups to my grandma. Uh, she's uh, 99 years old, and uh, looking forward to Christmas. She told me that she said, "I think this is gonna be my last Christmas 
And I'm like, oh, Grandma, she's she been saying that shit for 10 years, so we'll see, you know. Uh, but, you know, no matter how it goes, she's uh, lived a wonderful life uh, in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, yeah. Oh, hey, to my folks back home in Nebraska, uh, big fight this weekend, Terrence Bud Crawford in New York. Shout out to Terrence, man. Uh, we're really proud of uh, everything he's done and doing. Uh, he just opened up a store. So, hey, everybody in North Omaha, make sure y'all go and support uh, Terrence Bud's Crawford store on 24th Street, selling merchandise and shit for boxing. Make sure you support the brother. And, uh, yeah, we'll be watching you this weekend uh, with the big title fight. Uh, and I'm hoping that, uh, you know, when Bud win this one, I hope he get a shot at uh, at Mayweather. But I, I don't think Mayweather would ever accept a fight with him, you know, because he's too young and in his prime and uh, – Mayweather like being unbeaten, so I'm sure if he does, he say he's coming back to fight, I'm sure he's gonna keep it safe with motherfuckers that he know he can beat. He ain't gonna take a chance of fucking with Young Bud. So uh, yeah, that's this weekend uh, on ESPN. So you don't even have to pay per view this one. So make sure you check it out uh, all across the country. Terrence Bud Crawford this Saturday night on ESPN uh, fighting a guy I never heard of. He's just gonna beat the shit out of him. Um, so I don't even pay attention to the people he's fighting right now until Errol Spence or Mayweather or Pacquiao, somebody on that level, step up to fight Bud. You know, I don't, I don't even, the rest of these people, you know, he's just going to, just going to take them out. A uh, lot of shit going on. Uh, got the Trump impeachment hearings. Yeah. Yeah. That's going on. Um, I mean, I uh, I I'm, I tune in every day, you know. I'm just disgusted and just like every day. I just think like, damn, this shit, this this shit can't be real. What's going on? And they uh try to throw us off with the uh, the terminology. I didn't I didn't know what quid pro quo was or whatever that shit they was talking about. I was like, man, what the fuck are they talking about? I looked it up. It doesn't even give you a real definition. Um. Uh, in the uh, dictionary for quid pro quo. But basically, Trump was trying to bribe some motherfuckers and just strong arm them over in Ukraine. That's basically what it meant. But I didn't understand when I looked it up. <laughs> oh, shit. I know I ain't the only motherfucker who didn't understand. I just feel like it right now. <laughs> oh, shit. Trump is tripping, man. He, uh... He's just just running around like you know like he ain't did shit and and what i can't believe how he gets all these people to get in trouble with him you know like to do shit for him to where they get in trouble they go to jail and this motherfucker's just out chilling it's only a matter of time before rudy giuliani is locked up this motherfucker went from being uh you know getting all the crime bosses uh prosecuted and shit in new york to where he gonna fuck around fucking with trump and he's going to end up in prison. <laughs> That's some crackhead shit, man. I mean, I don't even understand how he let himself fall into this this bullshit he's doing. But, you know, hey. Um, big ups to, uh, uh, I guess, uh, Camila Harris. She dropped out the race. She dropped out the race. But uh, Joe Biden and Elizabeth Warren saying if they win... Uh, the nomination that they might uh, want her as a vice president. So, yeah, maybe she'd be vice president. Uh, I I didn't follow her too much. I mean, even though she's, I mean, I was lost with all the people that got arrested. But I'm sorry, I, I couldn't. I just once I find out somebody got pe a whole bunch of people brothers locked up, it's just hard for me to hear anymore after that. I mean, they might have been, she might have been saying the best shit ever, but she lost me when I found out that uh, she had people uh, getting locked up uh, for marijuana. So, yeah, that kind of, and, you know, maybe I made a mistake. I don't know, but, like I said, that, that type of shit there loses me. Is this the Dope Dealer podcast? I cannot deal with somebody getting people locked up for marijuana. And I know it was years ago, but, hey. Shit, it's, 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 uh, it's rough out here. Uh, what else is going on, man? Uh, 
uh, waiting on uh Oh man, you know what? I, uh, these guys keep they they just never cease to amaze me. The New England Patriots, and I know I'm all over the place, y'all. But this is what y'all get when I get high and I come in, and I didn't know Jamal was gonna be late. But this is how it goes. So the New England Patriots have been found again of uh, shooting video of the Cincinnati Bengals game this week. And I'm thinking to myself, like, and now that, you know, they saying it was for some uh, documentary that they doing that Bill Belichick didn't know shit about. He said, man, I don't know nothing about it. I ain't seen no footage. And I'm thinking to myself, damn, this just goes back to all the cheating they've already been accused of and, and been found guilty of. And now, I mean, y'all cheating to play Cincinnati the next week? The worst team in the NFL, y'all shooting they sidelines and getting trying. I, I don't know, man. But you know, I, I'm truly, I'm truly finding out uh, that there. I mean, there's a lot of people that really, honestly believe that if you're not cheating, you're not trying. I mean, I mean that that's that's. I mean that's that's really the way it is. If you're not cheating, you're not trying. So the Patriots, I mean, and I don't like anything, uh, any sp athletic teams in Boston anyway. I don't like none of them. I don't like the Celtics, the Red Sox, the Patriots, the Bruins, Boston University. I don't like any of those. So I, it just blows me away with the Patriots, uh, what they've been accused of again. And what do you do after all this times of cheating? I mean, I was laughing to myself. I said, well, you know, uh, they got six championship rings and they, they've been cheating for years. So they still been good. They probably would, without the cheating, they probably have five championship rings. So I know the cheating at least, at least got them one ring. Cheating at least got the New York, uh, New England Patriots one ring. I'll keep it on the NFL for a minute. Uh, Le'Veon Bell running back for the Jets. These guys, man. <laughs> Le'Veon said he was sick, man. He had to go home from practice last Thursday and Friday. They ruled him out Saturday for Sunday's game, and he was spotted Saturday night at a bowling alley bowling with some orange leather pants on, Paul. Yeah. And he was already, they already say he couldn't play on Sunday. He didn't stay at home. He went bowling where all types of people could see him. And he wore orange leather pants. I don't know what to say, man. That's on the level, of, I mean, that's on the level of the low management shit. I, don't, I mean, that I just don't get. I mean, low management, that shit is unbelievable. And uh, the shit Le'Veon Bell is on that level. This motherfucker ain't playing in the game on Sunday and went bowling on Saturday night with some orange leather pants on <laughs> in New York City. Dope dealers. Yeah, Dope Jamal, dealer podcast. Man, he, there he is. I'm here, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. I just caught a little piece of it. I just saw that story with uh, Le'Veon Bell. That's some... Yeah, That's and he's like, yeah. I bought I bought a two fifty one, my yeah. best game ever. Cause he had the flu, right? He yes, was, he 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 yeah. didn't practice Thursday, Friday, yeah. Saturday. They ruled him out of Sunday's game. Any bowling, yeah. The optics don't. I mean, it's not and he's illegal. At the, and he's at the bowling alley from. They said he was there from ten thirty till two a.m. when they closed. I mean, the, he shut it down. Yeah, the optics don't look good. I I, I agree and with hey, that. look. And you got to believe there's no motherfucking way. Every time I've ever been bowling in my life as an adult, I was drinking. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he was drinking at the bowling alley. He yeah. wasn't just. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, I mean in, in 2020, he, though, like he didn't think like, like yeah. nobody was going to see. He didn't him. give a fuck. He didn't give a fuck. Yeah. He didn't give a fuck. What's up, homie? So I'm out. Sorry, I'm late, man. Uh, You know, uh, issues, traffic. Uh, uh, But I'm here, man. Everything, everything good? Yeah. Yeah. All I did was. uh. I was a little rambling all over the place talking about sports and I, uh, you know, rest in peace to Juice World and that oh, situation. Yeah, yeah. And, and I was just talking about the youngsters in these drugs. And, you yeah, know. they got to, you know, it's from what I understand, he, the feds was waiting for him when he got off the plane. He knew I it. I don't believe that. 
He knew it, and you don't believe. No, the reason why I don't believe he that. swallowed. Why would you swallow that shit? Yeah, I don't believe that because it don't even carry that much time. They wouldn't go. Uh, I mean, that's not no serious offense. You know, I mean, that doesn't even. I mean, that doesn't carry no time. They wasn't gonna do nothing. Now, the only thing that could have been a problem. I mean, that would have been the worst problem in the situation that him and his boys was in was the fact they did have guns on the plane they was on. Oh, they did. Now, that was worse. The pills in the in the weed ain't shit. Mm-hmm. Dope dealer podcast. That's not nothing. That, how could you? I mean, you wouldn't. So I, I don't. I don't believe he swallowed them because he's trying to get, keep them from the police. Well, what you, I mean, your common sense. No, if you swallow a whole bunch of pills, you're gonna kill yourself. So what? What would you rather? And you not. I mean, would you rather go to jail or, or be or dead? dead? Or be dead? Yeah, that makes no sense. But like I say, man, pills don't even carry no time. They don't get no time for that. The reason why they don't is. Because it's mostly been white people until now. Black people just start getting into that shit. So all this time it's been white people. They ain't locking them up for no long periods of time. How many times you ever in your life heard a motherfucker say, yeah, man, I just did 10, had them pills, man. Mm-hmm. You ain't never heard nobody say mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Um. It said that yeah, I guess when they, they, they pulled into a private hangar and the feds was, so the feds must have got a tip. Yeah, they that. said the pilot told them. Yeah, some shit. Uh, guns and drugs at a private hangar. Um, they left from Van Nuys Airport. Oh, that was yeah. Oh, they little, were okay. Yeah. So when he went into cardiac arrest, as police and federal agents were searching his and her, his and his entourage luggage for guns and drugs, uh, the rapper's girlfriend asked by police if he had any medical issues or had ingested any drugs. Replied that he takes Percocets, a painkiller, and has a drug problem. Um, the f- Officers and agents have been waiting at the Atlantic Aviation Hangar at Midway early Sunday because they suspected a private plane from Los Angeles carrying carrying the musician whose real name, blah, 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 was carrying contraband. So, yeah, somebody, the search turned up 41 vacuum sealed bags of marijuana. God damn. That ain't nothing, man. That's, they that's, make that's, that's they just smoking. I mean, vacuum sealed bags. I mean, that, it could be 41 bags with $20 worth yeah. of weed in it. They just, look at, they just. Yeah, rapper, you know, that's what they do. They, vacuum uh, sealed. What's vacuum sealed got to do with? the weed six bottles of prescription codeine cough syrup two nine millimeter pistols a 40 caliber pistol a high capacity ammunition magazine and metal piercing bullets God, he is from chicago you know they yeah <laughs> so i mean yeah the guns and shit was the worst thing you know yeah they yeah uh man well yeah yeah that's crazy and i, I wasn't really familiar with him like i'm not familiar with a lot of these young uh, young rappers, these. Um, I think I remember one song he had. Uh, I think he had the song with the sting with the police sample on it. Uh, um, I think that's him. And he, I think he complained that sting t- takes all the publishing for the uh, song. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, I think we yeah. talked about that. Like, sting gets all of the publishing for the song. He was kind of mad about that. Um, but yeah, you when you so yeah, rest in peace. Um, yeah, rest in peace. Uh, unfortunately, man. Um, what else? Uh, what else you talk about? We mess with. Huh? Oh, I just, uh, I just was telling people make sure they, you know, during the holidays, a lot of people suffer from depression. Yeah. And, and you know, missing family members that passed away, certain things like that. So make sure you look out for everybody, and you know, try to be there for them. You know, if they need people, need somebody to talk to at this time. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I was saving the. Uh, Absolutely, and I want to. I want to before. I want to do a rest in peace. Um, I'm, I'm, Toby, I don't know if you're familiar with this story. I want to uh, say this brother name. Make sure I get this brother name correct. Uh, oh, rest yeah. in peace to me say it? Frank Ordonez. Frank or rest in peace to Frank Ordonez. You familiar with him? Uh, the UPS. Job. He was the UPS job. Paul, you familiar with the story? Man, this is man. Man, rest in peace, Frank Odonez, man. He was the UPS driver. These two fucking scumbags robbed the jewelry store and then took him hostage, um, had a shootout with the police. The police, knowing that he was in the truck as a hostage, police didn't give a fuck. They lit the truck up with 200 bullets, killed, killed the two scumbags, and killed him, too. He was trying to get out the truck. They shooting at the truck, he trying to get. It's, I don't know if you've seen the video. It's a video of it. No, I didn't see like, the video. Yeah, the video's like, because you see him like trying to get out the truck. Like he, the guy is shooting. Why would the police just shoot up, shoot, because shoot that, like that? That's what I'm saying. That, that's what I'm saying. So it's it's his Damn, family. That's, that's his family crazy. got a lawsuit. Yeah, it's, but that's like, they didn't give a. I mean, like, why would they shoot? Why wouldn't they try to. Uh, 
see um, if they could get the man out safely well, was, first. Yeah, and they um, because police are trying are, to say they shot first. The people that and robbed the bank did yeah. probably didn't want to kill the man. Yeah. Well, I mean, they, these motherfuckers seem like they had a death wish. Um, uh, the police said they shot first, and, and mind you, this happened in traffic, like uh-huh. rush hour traffic. So, and a, another man got shot. He was just in his car, old white man. Yeah, he just happened to be in his car in the, in the intersection when the shit went down. They, because sh- and they don't know who what bullet killed him. Most likely, I'm guarantee you, when they it's gonna be one of the police bullets. Yeah, they shot two hundred of them. Two lit uh, two hundred. I mean, so. And Frank, uh, he had been working for UPS for five years, but this was his first time driving a truck by himself. This was his first day, because I guess he always had a partner. Yeah, somebody so this hop was his, out and one person yeah, in the truck. this was his first route where they had him go by himself. Father of two, 27 years old. Yeah, that's horrible. Um, yeah, so, yeah, listen, that, that, that yeah. Man, and, uh, so hopefully, his family. That's yeah, yeah, blessings yeah. to his family, and hopefully uh, they got a hell of a case, and it's got to be some answers. You know, we, we at Dope Dealer Podcast, we don't hate the cops. We don't, you know, we know they have a tough job. We know it's, it's you know, it's not easy. Mm. Mm. But, but um, well, at least one of us don't hate the cops. Um, yeah. But, listen, man, you just can't shoot up a truck with 200 bullets knowing they have a, a, a hostage in there. Ah, damn. Nah, yeah. man. It, I mean, come on, man. Come on, yeah. man. They know better than that, man. Yeah, so so let's get into our main story, man. Um, uh, Mike Vick is back. Michael Vick is back in the news, man. Uh, and he ain't yeah, just trying to mind his yeah, own business. Yeah, Mike, Michael Vick, Taking we all nice, know. nice, nice Thanksgiving photos mm-hmm. with his wife and kids. And motherfuckers want to fuck with him. If you, you know, everybody know Mike Michael Vick's story. Everybody know NFL superstar went to prison, rightfully so, for doing some awful things to dogs. Um, served his time, I think, two, three years, something no, like that. No, eight, yeah, eight, two years, eight, yeah. five, close uh, to two years. Came out, changed, turned his life around, became an advocate against dog fighting, and uh, has been working with the Humane Society since working. 2009. And the Humane has, Society has said he has been a huge help. Yes, because he's been going to all the hoods where where people might fight dogs and not think nothing of it and speaking to those youngsters. So, you know, he's in, he's been kept, you know, he's retired. He came back and played in the NFL for a few few years, uh, did well, came back, hey, played for my working Eagles. working on TV now, got yeah. a job. Has kept kind of quiet, uh, you know, quiet since he retired i mean but he doing the tv stuff and so i guess helped a lot of people yeah. i had a lot helped a lot of players out mentor them help them yeah. out so i guess uh he was named a pro ball honorary honorary captain yeah. well, which i understand all it is is you just come out on the field for the coin toss no 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 it's that it's, it's other things they have events and shit like that okay. during the week okay and you uh you you have other responsibilities. Mm-hmm. There but, are other, but during the game is just mainly yeah, just yeah, come out for doing, the coin yeah, toss. Yeah, you do. There are other responsibilities that go with yeah. it. He but, was one of but four people. Too big. Yeah, one of four people named as an honorary captain at the NFL Pro Bowl, a game that nobody fucking watches. Yes, <laughs> First NFL of all, players don't even watch. More it. people nobody. sign the petition than <laughs> than gonna watch the game. That's funny. <laughs> That's the truth. That's hilarious. Um, uh, so. This happened, I guess it was announced, and and then you know, uh, white, white folks, folks went crazy. <laughs> white people that lost their dog lovers, white they lost their goddamn mind. I, you know, I, I, I think, and I, I'm, I went back and forth with a couple of people online. I think the word honored fucked people up. They just saw Mike Vick honor honorary captain. Yeah, the honorary, and that yeah, they just they felt like he was getting an award I, or some I, shit. I, I told one dude on Twitter, I said, "Y'all act like he's getting an Oscar or something." Yeah, like, like he's getting an honorary Oscar award. or something. Like y'all know it's just him walking on a like he going into the, the Hall of Fame. So it's like it, it ain't no killers in the Hall of Fame. So it's been a petition uh, yeah. started that has three hundred thousand, uh, no five hundred thousand. Oh, it went up huh? over five hundred thousand signed demanding the NFL remove Michael Vick as the honorary Pro Bowl captain. And it is just and now there's another uh, it's a f- petition for fans who say they want him to. Uh, fans start petition to stop Mike. Oh, yo, that's the same one. That's okay. I thought it was a petition. Uh, that uh that that want him to continue. I mean, man. I'm like, so go ahead. It's just I mean, this is some nonsense to and, me. And, but go ahead. And 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 all, you know how many times I hear white people say, you know, black people got to get over slavery, get over all this type of shit. 
But it's like, man, they ain't getting over these dogs. Yeah. And what they failed to realize, like I always said during when this time was going on, like the bit I had when I said, man, you know. I mean, white people just don't understand, like, you know, uh, it was horrible what he did. But it just in general, yes, there's some black dog lovers. But, man, we remember the days of when uh, white people, when they were sicking dogs on us and they was attacking our ass and they were spraying us down with water hose. So our level of compassion for dogs is, you know, is not as high in most cases. Right, right, right. I mean, and that's just the truth. But this man served his time and it's done. And, I mean, it, you know. There's people that have killed people. And, I mean, do you think they would have said, we don't want Ray Lewis to be honorary captain? Where, Where is exactly, where is the same energy for George Zimmerman? Where's the same energy? They just said hit, you know, when the the, the the white cop female down in Texas killed the brother and mm-hmm. a lot of people, you know, and the the brother hugged her at the and a lot of, you know, oh, he's it's forgiveness. It's a, you know, I saw a lot of white people online. It's forgiveness, you know, he he's forgiving her. That's you know, okay, but where's the forgiveness for Michael Vick? We know what it is. It's about them dogs. We know how serious white people take them dogs. We understand what he did was horrible, but yeah. you got to say if somebody. For somebody, I mean, if you want to post a child for somebody who did that, the way he came home and what he has done, that's I mean, what you want. You know, he could he could have came home and just said, fuck y'all, and just went about his life and, and never even spoke on it. He's been working with the, for 10 years now with the Humane Society. Just all them hours, all this shit to try to, uh, you know, make amends for the wrong that he did, man. It's it's really it's really absolutely nuts that they would even be concerned. All this shit going on, we worried about motherfucking Michael Vick uh, standing at midfield on a uh, on a game that don't nobody even pay attention to. Like really? I, I just like I said, I think the word, but the honorary thing through my, like they I think like it threw people off. Honor. Yeah, they think he yeah. That's what it is, and I'm 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 gonna try to find. But well, then this. they should do a little bit of reading, and they would realize it's not an honor. It's, I mean, it's an honor that they chose you, but I'm saying, and it, it ain't you know, that serious. Think about it, man. The, the NFL and everybody there thought about it, and they figured enough time had passed that they could do this shit, and it's the bullshit that that come up. You can get five hundred thousand motherfuckers to talk about Michael Vick and these goddamn dogs. It's um, but we can't get no gun, go no gun safety. We can't get nothing done. Motherfuckers going up in schools, shooting up the schools. We can't get nothing done about this real shit that's going on. Mm-hmm. As uh, Evan Lionel was saying, can we talk about what's real? Can we talk about... God damn, Evan. Yeah, we... Man, that's saying, can we talk about what's real? No, we can't, <laughs> I guess. We uh, got to talk about this dog shit. Like, I mean, what 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 does he have to do? That's why I would love... I, I wanted to get somebody up here who who was against... Well, like, what does he have to... What else does this man well, have to to do and you know what I, I listened to somebody who spoke about it the other day who's who's a avid dog lover and what they said uh mason from mason iron on espn okay. 710 los angeles mason has two dogs and mm-hmm. no kids i mean he loves his dogs like his kids yeah. and his dogs mm-hmm. are his life so uh ireland asked mason like what do you think about michael vick in this situation and he said you know what even though I'll never forgive him being a dog lover for what he did to the dogs. He said, but he served his time. He did his thing. He's working with the main society. You know, they should leave him alone. He's he served his time. And that's what that's what I and that's um, that's cool, Mason. And I I was telling people like we're not uh, well, I would never forget. We're not saying don't forgive him. No, nah, you don't have to. When I'm not we're not saying don't forget what he is he has done. We're mm-hmm. not saying that. We're just saying, you know, remember that uh, obviously, but we're saying let him live. I mean, and what what else? What else can we? What else can he do? See, and you know what? Part of it is that because of the way society is now, we have gotten to a point where if somebody does something because of the Me Too movement and all these different things, if somebody do one thing, there's literally people who act like they should never work again, never do nothing. I mean, in some cases, depending on what it is, that might be true. But I'm saying we can't throw everybody away. Mm-hmm. Motherfucker make one mistake. That's it. That motherfucker's done. He, I don't, he should never be able to play football, basketball, baseball. He should never be able to earn a living. I mean, what's the motherfucker shit? You should be able to ride past them homeless and he stand on the street. Is that what we want to see motherfuckers go down to? Is that all? Yeah. Is that, will that make you happy? It seemed like that, you know. Seems like that's gonna make you happy. I mean, 
I mean, you know, it's mer. You know, it's. I mean, it's, it's people who my my stepfather. You know, my stepfather murdered somebody. Went to prison and manslaughter. Met my mom. Came home. You know, got married. You know, changed his. You know, yeah. Got married. Changed his life. Was we supposed to just, you know, keep him in? <laughs> you know. Keep him in prison forever, or just not I mean, let him. Yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, came home, turned his life around. Like, yeah. Happened. What was your? Uh, I mean, shit. Was he not supposed to get married? Was he not? You know what I mean? Was your mom not supposed to marry him? Yeah. Um, but okay. moms is gangster though. Now that I think about it, he just came back. Was, hey, what's happening, baby? Well, He's like, oh, well, I'm yeah. Just what, what happened was he was my uncle's uh, cellmate, so my mom went up there to. Visiting her brother. Oh, that's even more gangster. Yeah, he was. Yeah. My, oh shit. Yeah, that's a true story. My mom yeah, going up there okay, visiting her brother, and this motherfucker. My uncle always. My uncle to this day he say, man, I I remember he asked me about it. I shouldn't. Have, and then he started. So he was like, yo, what's up with your sister? And so they, you know, it's back in the day. This is the seventies. Yeah, they started yeah. writing. He started writing. Every them. cell. That's what we did. Every cell, man. You ask them if they know somebody. They yeah. got a, a family member. And, and so he and saw her would. come up there. Visiting my uncle, he asked my uncle, but uh, my uncle, uh, you know, whatever. And they started writing each other, and then, you know, it, I guess it went from there. I was this gangster. Um, Mom, yeah, see, hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> this is dope, did it? See, you, nigga, I've been knowing you all this time. You ain't yeah. never told me this. This is some real dope, yeah. dope. This is uh, a small, true dope story. Hold on, this ain't, we ain't just getting yeah. right off of this. Now, as soon as he came home, he yeah. moved in, he came, he moved in with us. But now, nah, moved I mean, in with yeah. us. So damn, like in a matter of uh hold on, hold on. Let me let me tell you something here. In a matter of uh three weeks, you didn't tell me your mama smoked weed oh, yeah. and she got her husband out of prison. Nigga well, <laughs> That's some real dope yeah, dealer that's, shit. That's true. Damn, shout out to moms keeping yeah. it real. And um yeah, she was keeping it a hundred before niggas yeah. even mentioned a hundred. He came, yeah, he came, yeah. He got, I, he got out like 70, 77. I think they got married. Where the and bell my little, at, And nigga? my little brother came at, uh. Where's the bell? I think, oh, I mean, okay, okay. Yeah, we and need my, the bell. And my little brother came at, uh, came a year later, 78. He was born in Bling, 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 bling. I didn't have the bell right here. Bling, 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 uh, bling, bling. This is real dope. I think I may, I may not, I think I left it at the crib, uh, Paul. Yeah, he said he, he came home in 77. Wow. Yeah, and then my, and, and my little brother came in 78. So they got, they got busy. Hey, so I found this uh this is uh I found this little thread I did talking to uh so um so Jack Slam, I don't know if you know Jack, he's yeah, a comedian. I know Jack. Real real conservative yeah, comedian. Jack out of Las Vegas. Out of Las Vegas. Yeah, Jack Slammy. Um, I've done his shows before. Ah, uh, damn, did I miss it? Uh damn, I just had it and then fucking um I just had it. Okay. Funny, my timeline is full of people bitching about racism, about Vic, but nobody's saying you got to be a piece of shit to fight beautiful dogs. So here you go. You got to be a piece of shit scumbag to fight dogs, period. So that's what he put up. So but damn, I mean, that was years ago. I mean, and, that, and if listen, if you're still feeling your piece, that's fine. But the piece of shit still can, you know, live his life, right? Yeah, yeah. So I said, um, yes, and he did his time. And when he got out, he did work for dog dog organizations, did many events against dog fighting. So what more does he have to do? How about, and I know this sounds crazy, but how about the NFL honors a player that didn't go to prison? My guess is there are thousands to choose from. You know, a good example for kids. So that's where the word honor, see, he they thinking. Yeah. So I said, uh, Jack is the pro ball, a game that nobody watches. And even with this nonsense, nobody going to watch, still going to watch it. Y'all acting like he's getting an award or something. Dude, he's just walking on the field. I think the word honor is confusing, folks. Um, that is true. Uh so Jack, Jack come back. I thought it was an honor to captain a pro ball game. Still a good place for a role model for kids. There are thousands who are not convicted felons. Um, well, that's just like saying he shouldn't even go talk to people about uh, the things he did that was wrong. He shouldn't try to help him, whatever. He should just sit at the house broke, not, with not yeah. working, not being able to do nothing, still in debt. So yeah, so so he somebody uh, somebody said so he should go on with his life like you did nothing like you did nothing wrong, I, with a question. So they saying so he should just go on with his life like he did nothing wrong. I think the NFL has higher standards than that. But then again, I don't. Once a piece of shit, always a piece of shit. I said, but Vic has did the 
the complete opposite. He has worked with dog organizations, spoken out about his past. Animal rights group have said he has been a huge help. So what more does he have to do? What they say then? Uh, so if a man rapes a woman and then goes uh, for prison after he gets out, all is forgiven? That's a little different there. Yeah, yeah. Raping, and that, that's a whole... <laughs> Um, I mean, raping a woman, that's a whole other thing. Yeah, you can't that compare only, that raping only a has, woman that to makes fighting sense. dogs. Yeah, that don't even make that, sense. That, that's not a, a fair comparison. That don't, yeah, that don't even make sense. Um, yeah, so it's just, I'm going to read some of the, I'm going to go on Twitter and read some of the Twitter stuff. Uh, um, but, oh, yeah, you know what? I, I want to call, bring a gentleman on. This is our homie. This is Nick. Um Nick Hamilton, L.A., uh, he, he did a, a basketball preview. He's uh, Nick okay. Hamilton. Yeah. Uh, so he's he's got an opinion about this, man. So we're going to bring him on the show. Um, let's see what he's talking about. Huh? Yeah. There we go. Nick Hamilton, he did our NBA season preview show. <laughs> Dope Dealer Podcast, can you hear me? One, two. Nick, one, two, one, two, okay, maybe. Maybe I call him back. Nick, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, what's up, man? Dope, welcome to the Dope Dealer Podcast. What's Oh, man, did I? Oh, so he was, Nick was in a bad neighborhood. Uh, it's Nick Alexander. No, 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 Nick Hamilton. You're the, you're Nick Hamilton, LA. I'll show you a picture of him. He did, he called in. Oh, called He me. called I in, yeah. Saturday, I think it was Hoop Lord. Who, he when when Hoop Lord was here, I think he called in. Nick Alexander. Okay, that's a different time. Nick Alexander sat in and did the basketball. So that's, that's why you had me confused. One two one two. Nick, 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 just not. Yeah, Nick. I you. Oh, yeah, hell, <laughs> let's try it again, Mickey. What's happening, man? Welcome to the Dope Dealer Podcast. Hey, man, thanks for having me. I appreciate uh, it. I introduce yourself. Just tell everybody who you are again. Nick Hamilton, uh, sports and pop culture reporter. Yes, yes. And, and first thing, Nick, I, uh, I've been following you since you did our show, man. Congratulations on everything you got on, man. I, you got going on. I see you on TV. You're doing, you're doing big things, man. So congratulations on all that stuff, my man. Hey, man, thank you. I appreciate that. Yes, we, sir. We appreciate me and Toby Hicks are here, man. So, of course, we just we just wanted to get your opinion about that. We've been talking about the Michael Vick little situation, man, um, uh, you know, both angles of it. Uh, so what you, we would love to hear your opinion. What you think about it? It's up to a half a million signatures. Go ahead, Nick. Well, here's the thing. You got to look at the source. Right? Like, you absolutely have to look at the source as it pertains to who's conducting these signatures, what mm -hmm. the motive is, mm -hmm. and then who has connections to what media outlet to get this information disseminated amongst the masses. Right? Mm -hmm. So, having said all of that, I think it's absolutely absurd. I think it's preposterous. Uh, I read a story the other day where a woman had destroyed about, I think, five or six puppies and got no jail time. Mm. Uh, but yet, Michael Vick spent 23 years, excuse me, 23 months, rather, at Leavenworth State Prison in Kansas, one of the hardest prisons probably in America. I've been there. Yeah, uh, it ain't no joke. I've been, I've been in there. I've been in there. Oh, man. Toby right. been for in there. Yeah. yeah, I've yeah. been in there. We for dog fighting. Yeah. yeah. Right. Facts, for facts. dog fighting. Mm -hmm. And I'm not condoning, you know, what he what he was a part of. Absolutely. I'm not condoning the, the the cruelty of animals because they, you know, animals deserve to have a life like anybody else. But the fact that the man paid his debt to society, he re he rehabilitated his image. The man came back, had an opportunity in football, took the opportunity by the horns, and did pretty well mm -hmm. with the teams that he played with: the Philadelphia Eagles, the the Pittsburgh Steelers, and continues to do work with. Uh, the the uh, humane Human society since 2009. Continues to be, right, it continues to be an upstanding citizen in in society. So hasn't gotten in I mean, any more trouble. No trouble at all. Mm -hmm. No trouble at all. I mean, yeah. he, he's probably not even spending on the street. That's how much trouble he's not getting into. <laughs> he take it Thanksgiving and, and family and, photos. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, a nigga ain't getting in trouble done, when he I do mean, that. The man is working for Fox, mm -hmm. for Fox Sports, right? Okay, and does and, and does a really great job. And what he and what he's doing, he's what he's, he's doing stuff for Epics, uh, the network Epics, and doing NFL related content for them. Uh, I saw him at the Chargers facility about three or four weeks ago. Spoke to him briefly, you know, just kind of in passing, 
Uh, dude is always in good spirits. I kind of talked to him about it. Oh, I said, man, I still got your uh, Michael Vick experience shoes, man. He said, you still got the original? I said, dude, I keep them clean. I don't, I was like, I don't, I barely wear them. Mm. And so he kind of laughed about it. Mm-hmm. And he was like, man, that's cool, man. You know, it's just a real down-to-earth guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't understand all the hoopla about him being a Pro Bowl captain when the NFL clearly doesn't have a problem with it mm-hmm. or else they wouldn't have even put his name in the hat. Right. I think it has, it has a lot to do with racism. I was just, more than it has to do oh, with man, with, you took the words out of hand. You took the words out of my mouth. Oh, yeah, that's that was, definitely That was going to be my next question. That was going to be my it's next racism. question is I mean, racism. Because if this, let's ask the question, and I'm not here to cast any aspersions upon anyone, but let's ask the question. If this were, were a white gentleman that conducted the same crime, ate the same debt society that Michael Vick did, and that was, what, six, oh, excuse me, ten years ago, approximately ten, nine, ten years ago? Correct. And hasn't done anything, hasn't broken any laws, come close to breaking any laws, will we be talking about the same situation? Probably not. Not and at all. And that's why I say it has every, it, it, this thing is entrenched in racism mm. that continues to permeate our society. Right. And will continue to do so. Mm. Um, and that's all it is for Michael Vick. I mean, Mike, it's no excuse and there's no re- rhyme or reason why Michael Vick should not be a Pro Bowl captain. Players love him still. I, again, I saw him at the Chargers facility. The players are coming up to him like, mm-hmm. you know, he can walk on water and crap ice. Oh, he's, he's I loved. Mean, yeah. still, he's, he's beloved. He's very revered. Uh, he's very well respected. Um, you know, you had guys like Lamar Jackson speak highly of him, yeah. who yeah. is the MVP candidate, I might add, yeah. currently in the National Football League. He is the MVP uh, to me. Had, He's the MVP you've had various me. quarterbacks, even white quarterbacks, uh, that have spoke very highly of, of Michael Vick. So I think it's a lot of outsiders, and I think it's a lot of outside noise mm-hmm. that a bunch of people that are talking loud but ain't saying nothing. How, um, could I, hit, could hit I mean, this ain't even PETA and nobody. This ain't even PETA and the Humane Society why, ain't even tripping exactly. off this shit. And, and so, well, what, what, uh, Nick, real quick, I just want what part of because I, I I went back and forth with people online about what part of the I think the word honor or honoree honorary is, throwing, is what honorary it's called. It's throwing people off. I think they Thinking a lot of people don't get, being yeah honored. they think he's like, they think he's like getting the Oscar or something like honorary Oscar. I tell people it's not that serious. I think you think that word is throwing people off. I think people that have a 70 or below IQ, that word is throwing them off. <laughs> yeah. The majority of people probably you've, you've spoken to have a, have a 70 IQ or below. Right. And their parents are probably brother and sister. Oh, because sir. there's no way that you understand what that, my son understands what the word honorary is, and he's in first grade. Mm, okay. Mm. Uh, so I, there's no excuse for a grown adult who, who acts like they can comprehend the English language. Right. Has, should have a problem with the word or don't know the, the definition of the word honoree. That is absolutely ridiculous. And to me, for Michael Vick not to be a part of the twenty of the of the Pro Bowl coming up, uh, I hope the NFL continues to have him on the on the on the books. I hope they continue to have him a part of the festivities, even the Super Bowl festivities. Hmm. Because Michael Vick is a good solid guy. He knows football. The players love him. The league apparently still likes them mm-hmm. because they would again they wouldn't have him in uh, exactly. part of any of their festivities officially if they didn't approve or condone of his behavior exactly. away from the field. And you know the My NFL would not be hiring him yeah. at all. And they you know so, what again people can have a tall glass and shut the hell up, those who are against <laughs> And the thing is, Nick, That's... you know with the honorary they, they they haven't selected amnesia when it comes to honorary when it comes to the football shit. They don't forget what honorary means when it's like one of them parades and the Grand Marshal and the Boy Scouts and the pedophiles is all being honored, rolling down the street in the parade. Mm-hmm. Don't nobody say shit about them being honorary. Yeah, it's it's um uh, I fucked you up with the pedophile. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah, 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 you yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. I snuck that one well, in. I, I think, again, I think it's, it's all rooted in, I think a lot of what these people are, are doing or these signatures or whatever is basically rooted in ignorance and racism. It, it uh, is. Because there's no rhyme or reason why Michael Vick shouldn't. Give me a reason why Michael Vick shouldn't. You can't, and don't tell me about his, his early conviction because, again, if this is a land of second chances, then that man has paid his debt to society. He's done everything he can to rehabilitate himself educate himself on the dynamics of 
uh, understanding what animals, you know, are, are, are how animals are important, mm-hmm. uh, how to take care of an animal, uh, you know, all of those things that he did not know prior right. because of the culture that he was raised in in the South. Exactly. Uh, does again? Does I don't excuse what don't he excuse did. I don't think what he did was right, but again, we all fall short. Uh, he, again, he had to pay his debt. He did that, and he's moved on. Uh, you know, so I don't understand. Give me a real reason why Michael Vick shouldn't be the honorary captain of the 2020 Pro Bowl. No. Like, give me a real reason. I'll wait. No, no, yeah, we have no. It's no. It's no. Re- we know what Nobody the reason does. is. Yeah, we know. Nobody with common sense. Yeah. Does. We know we know what it is. We, I we, mean, people online are comparing it to, oh, should a rapist get out and be accepted right back in that, society? That, it's that, like, come on, that, man. That is, that's not even the same thing. No, nah, nah, no. Well, that doesn't even make first sense. First of all, this is, why, this is why I don't argue. What did Jay-Z say? A wise man told me never argue with fools because people from a distance can't tell who is who. Exactly. Exactly. So it, it's a mute point. Mm-hmm. You, I mean, we all, all, those of us that know the truth, those of us that understand what the laws of the land are, those that understand and watch this man pretty much mature uh, from the time he, he left prison and left the halfway house and went ahead and got his job back in the NFL, got another opportunity and took an opportunity and, 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 like that yeah, in the and NFL. To, and to be honest, you know, most people who uh, went through what he went through when they get out, they do. They make some type of error. I mean, shit. When I got out of prison, of I, I did shit that went. You know where I had to go back. You know, even if it was a violation or some stupid shit. But so I'm saying, this man has not done nothing. When most people get in trouble again. Mm. And and uh, and uh, I, I hate to say it like this, but I'm sure money has something to do with that. Because when you have money, you don't you you make different choices. The more money you have, the different choices you you make mm. for for the most part. Mm-hmm. So when you're out here, if you like you said yourself, you, you know, once you got out of that situation, unfortunately, it became a revolving door because of the opportunities or in financial opportunities that you weren't afforded when you when you were released. Mm-hmm. So there is a lot of a lot of brothers, and you know, that go through that. Unfortunately, I know I've had people in my family have, you know, unfortunately been a revolving door because. They don't have the same opportunities. If they were sitting on a hundred thousand or five hundred thousand dollars, I'm sure they'd be making different decisions that would yeah. not allow them to be a revolving door back into the, the the prison system, or better yet, the concrete slave ship. I like to call it. Uh, so again, uh, you know, Michael Vick has done any has done nothing. Has, and again, it's nothing uh, short of you know you have to admire that and respect it as a black man in this society. Uh, being a convicted felon, uh, it's not easy whether you have money or don't have money mm-hmm. as it pertains to your title because that will unfortunately always stick with you. Uh, but it's about the choices that you make, and he made some very wise choices and decided to, re- you know, rehabilitate. I mean, yeah, he didn't have to work with the humane he society. Made. He had to do shit. Yeah, he could have. He, 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 he didn't have to go back to the NFL. He could have. He, he could have said the hell with the NFL. Yeah. He, he could have said the hell with Arthur Blake. He said, you know, uh, and, and well, he wouldn't have. He, he wouldn't have got no money. He just said the hell with that. He, you know, I mean, he, he had to. He had to. Hey, he had to make up that money. He had fucked off. Um, exactly. Um, exactly. Accord- that's what I'm saying. But he could have. He could have had a sour attitude. Yeah. He could have been like, man. He could have been bitter. You know, he could have had this. This owe me. This owe, oh, y'all owe me. Yeah. You know, what I did for the league, y'all owe me. No, he didn't have that kind of attitude. He was like, hey man, look, I got to start from the bottom and work my way back to the top if I can. Uh, and that was his attitude, and that's and that's why he's been so successful even off the football field, even today. Because again, you think Fox Sports is going to hire somebody exactly. of this caliber if he wasn't or didn't display examples of, of being change. a rehabilitated yeah. man, yeah, being that's... a different man, mm-hmm. and having a different mentality? Most importantly, hell no. Mm-hmm. Please, it's hard for a, black, a brother that don't have a record trying to get his shot. Yeah. Do you think it's do you think it's easiest for a brother that that? And I'm, I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir. When I say that, have that yeah. type of right, you yeah. know, for a brother that that did have to go through the penitentiary system. So, I say that to say this is nothing but hogwash. It'd probably be at the bottom of a bird cage in the morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. <laughs> and Damn. you know, it's nothing. I, that's why I never argue with a lot of people on social media about certain issues because it's a it's a it's it's a mute point. Hey, um, you're not going to change their minds. You're definitely not going to change your mind. So it's pointless. 
Hey, man. Hey, again, yeah. I don't argue with anybody with a 70 IQ. Of <laughs> hey, man, you broke it down to us, man. I was just reading up, too. Uh, not only has worked with the Humane Society to help stop dog fighting, he helped get the Animal Fighting Spectator Prohibition Act passed in Congress. So, you know, he's 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 done a lot. And, we, and we, you know, we... We, you listen. We all on the same page about this, man, and uh, um, we glad that you called in to get your opinion, man. Uh, um, I mean, shit, man. I, 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 yeah, yeah just, it don't even. Yeah, man. Just, I, I know we, I, I know we got you for a couple more minutes, uh, uh, uh Nick. Let's just sure. talk. Let's get off that Michael Vick because we all know what that's about, man. NBA, man. Uh, the season is going well, man. Who, uh, who's coming out of L.A., man? It, it, it looks like it's coming down to the Clippers or Lakers, man. What you, what you think so far? Yeah, I think the way uh, the Lakers and the Clippers, obviously two different teams going in two different directions. And I mean, I mean, obviously right now in the Western Conference, the Lakers are one, the Clippers are, are two. Mm-hmm. Uh, but their teams, as far as mentality-wise, are going in different directions. It, it appears to me that the, that the Lakers are, as of right now, running a sprint versus the Clippers who are running a marathon and understand mm. that the season is a marathon and continue to stay under the radar. And I think the Clippers want to be under the radar. I think the Clippers are comfortable being under the radar, uh, being underestimated. Uh, the defense is, is spectacular for the most part. What uh, you talking about, Nick? They can tighten up. <laughs> what you talking about uh, over there, that's a Laker. That's, that's a Laker fan right there. Yeah, what you talking <laughs> oh, man, about? Come on now. You, you, uh, listen, listen. You know, come on now. I know I know you ain't been drinking during the broadcast now. No, you, not you at all. What soap. you talking about? So I, I know you, you're, you're a very smart guy. So don't sit up here and that's not it. Take your fan cape off for a second. Let's look at it objectively. Mm-hmm. Now you know good and well that the Clippers defensively are a much better team than the Lakers. Mm. Now the Lakers haven't seemed to have it together offensively. Well, LeBron you know what? James, you know what? Davis the, the, and, and company. The Clippers have better front court. D. The Lakers have better back. I mean, them, them bigs. You act like, hey, come on, we got AD back there. Javale, Dwight Howard been playing D. When you get back there, it's a whoa, problem. Whoa, wait, whoa. Now, obviously, the wing defenders. Uh, you know, the Clippers have with with Kawhi and, and PG. Obviously, that part. But uh, the Lakers defense ain't that bad either. You know what I'm the really Lakers looking at it as, okay, Nick? They, I feel not, like we got the best two man combo. Now LeBron is know, older, he's all that the best shit. Combo, but it's, it's, it's a listen. It's a five player game, and what I mean by that is this: when you look at Kawhi Leonard, who is the best two way player, probably the best wing defender we've ever seen, and you have Paul George with two new shoulders, you have mm. Patrick Beverly, you have Montrezl Harrell. You have Lou Williams that can shoot. You also have Mo Harkless. You have guys that can get nitty gritty, and they don't care about getting their pants dirty. When you look at the Lakers offensively, yes, you have the best two two man combo probably in the league with LeBron James and Anthony uh, Anthony Davis. LeBron is probably going to end up winning MVP. Anthony Davis will probably win Defensive Player of the Year. Definitely be in the category of MVP. However, when I look at the rest of the team. That's why I question because, I, and also on the sideline, because I look at okay, how well how well will Avery Bradley come back into the fold? Because mm-hmm. Kyle Kuzma has also been struggling as that third option. I was going to ask Kyle you about Kuzma him too. Adjust. Can how well can he adjust to that to that role? Because he struggled in that role thus far, and he's had to remember Kyle Kuzma has missed all of training camp. That is true. All of of, of the the you know all of the the preseason work. The regular season until recently. So you look at Kyle Kuzma and his struggles. How long will his struggles continue to go? You look at Avery Bradley. He's supposed he's scheduled to return on Wednesday. Tomorrow. Uh, and he's going to be on a minutes restriction. So how long are these guys going to be able to stay healthy enough to be able to jet? Well, I guess, the the, I guess Kawhi Clippers. should be healthy because he don't play every game. So I guess he should be healthy. <laughs> well, Small because he's nursing man. a knee contusion also. He's also nursing a knee contusion. Mm. So if you're nursing a knee contusion, which he's been dealing with the last year, even in Toronto, when he oh, that's right, he led them to a championship mm. um, with the same low management time time off. He played 60 games last year, got them to a uh, NBA Finals championship, their first probably ever in the last year I ever have in Toronto. Mm. Anyway, I digress. So, it- so moving forward to where Kawhi Leonard is right now, mm-hmm. yes, I, if, if that's what it takes to help me win a championship or at least get me to the NBA Finals, then so be it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm not worried about Kawhi Leonard mm. because you got other players that can play. They've right. proven. Uh, last I checked, sir, 
uh, opening night to the Los Angeles Clippers with without Paul George mm. beat the so LA you, Lakers. You sound like you. you, you, you sound, sound like, like you. Hold on. I mean, Nick, you sound like you leaning Steve Ballmer. You sound like you leaning towards the Clippers. I'm speaking facts. No, I'm speaking facts. Because the Lakers have the best dynamic duo in the league in Anthony Davis and LeBron James. Right. I said that wholeheartedly. So that doesn't make me a fan of any squad. Mm-hmm. I personally want both squads to stay healthy and win because my ultimate goal is to have both squads in the Western Conference Finals with seven games in the NBA Western Conference Finals. Oh, that'd, be, that'd be That's great. That's what I want. The hallway series. So, so, so yeah. no, 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 no try to box me in the corner. You think you're slick. That's funny. Uh... That's funny. <laughs> hey, real, hey, hey, uh, real, just, uh, we, uh, just real quick, Nick. Uh, uh we, the East, with, 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 just real quick, like thoughts about the East so far. It ain't saying? even worth no energy. Uh, in the East. You know what? Listen, Milwaukee, the, the Milwaukee Bucks. You, you got Giannis, obviously, who's the MVP candidate. He's playing on another level. You have uh, Chris Middleton. You have Eric Bledsoe. I think Milwaukee's done a stellar job. Uh, we saw what they did. They just met up the Clippers the other night by almost forty. Uh, and so they are a serious team, but also look at the, the Philadelphia 76ers. I like what the Sixers are doing. I think they still have yet to figure out how to work their depth on that team and how to work that team together enough where they start to play as a unit and, and more consistent. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like what Boston is doing with Kimball Walker. I think that's a bunch. I think. Yeah, I like uh, Boston too. Are, I said that's since the beginning of the uh, season. Yeah. They play, and I hate they the play Celtics, like but they, they got a squad. No, I, I, trust me, I, I, I'm right there with you. But I mean, you got your credit word. Yeah. Uh, one, two, one, two. For the first time in two in about two years, Brad Stevens has been able to cope without. Are you? Are the you? Play. You going out on us a little bit, Nick? But uh, 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 real quick, just tell everybody where can they find you at? Uh, uh, what's your Instagram? Where can everybody find you at? What you got going on? Oh man! Th- First of all, man, thank you guys for having me on. I greatly appreciate right on, it. Right on, Nick. Uh, you can find me on all things social media at Nick Hamilton LA. That's at Nick Hamilton LA, and also at Nightfall Media. That's N I T E S A L L M E D I A. My man. Well, listen, man. We got it. We we can't wait to get you in here. Maybe at the uh, All Star break, we we bring you in here and talk about the mid season, uh, the NBA, man. But we uh, thanks for calling in, man. Right God on, bless Nick, you, man. Happy holiday. Happy hey, holidays to you, man. Guys. No Keep doubt. Keep up the great work. I'll talk to you guys soon. Appreciate Thanks. you, man. Take care, my brother. Dope dealer. That's Nick Hamp. So cool, man. So yeah. So we he broke it. Got a little NBA into the NFL chat, but uh, we all on the same page. We all know what it's about. We know this Mike Vick story is bullshit. We know what it's about. Um, so yeah, it's just the world. It's the country we live in. I blame Trump. <laughs> oh, it ain't no uh, no if ands buts about it. A lot of this shit is his fault. I man. blame Trump. That this rhetoric just, he's yeah, pushing. That rhetoric they just pushing anything, man. I mean, it's always been racist. All that shit we know, racism and, and people, you know, shit. But now they just feel like they can come out and say it because the way mm-hmm. Trump doing it. Mm-hmm. Well, we're, we're appreci- send them back. Yeah, that nigga yell, send them back at his. Uh, political rally hey so listen uh follow us on uh instagram or twitter at dope dealers podcast dope dealers that's dealers with an s um please review leave a review subscribe to us and please leave a review and if you leave a review take a screenshot of it send it to our uh instagram dm and we will send you a free t-shirt that's how we do man uh toby you got anything coming up man give us a call at 818 818- Three three five two zero six five eight one eight three three five two zero six five. If you have any show ideas for two thousand and twenty, any topics you would like to touch, any guests you could think of that might be in the LA area you'd like us to reach out to, uh, give us a call eight one eight three three five two zero six five. Absolutely, man. What you got coming up? Anything? And for the holidays, if you want to bring me and Toby out for an event, we still you, you got know it, you got two yeah. weeks. Still for got the holidays time. or Martin Luther King weekend or whatever, man. Bookers, man. Uh, I'm at Jamal Doman, J A M A L D O M A N. At Toby Hicks, T O B E H I X X. Definitely, man. Uh, uh, next Thursday, I'm I'm coming out Victorville. Victorville, I'm coming to the Green Tree Inn. Oh yeah, man. That's yeah, a, Vic, that's Vic, uh, Victorville. Make sure you tag me. I got people out there. I let them know. Okay, yeah, the yeah, home of JT. Yeah. So Victorville, I'm coming your way next Thursday evening at eight o'clock at the Green Tree Inn. I'm coming next Thursday. Tell man. JT you got to come do the podcast. Oh I, yeah. I didn't. Hey, I, I've been. I asked him for like six months. So yeah. make sure you mention that to him. I said when you were in this area, man, come do the podcast. 
Definitely, man. Uh, uh, so, yeah, listen, man, we love you guys, man. Uh, uh, please uh, keep spread the word. Keep spreading the word. We do it for the troops that we, we shout out the Army, Navy, yeah. Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, National Guard, the Bloods, the Crips, and the Essays. And yeah, shout out to everybody at Comedy Pop Up. Pop up. Shout out to Paul, our engineer, man. We love you guys, man. Dope Dealer Podcast. We out. <laughs>